What's going on you guys? How y'all doing today? So we are back with another video. I've just been riding around for the past 30 minutes just enjoying this bike, but I want to talk about something in today's video, which is why I bought the Yamaha R6. So let me start this thing up, get on the road, and talk to you guys about it. So as you guys know, I had the Yamaha R7 and I wanted to step up and get a 600. So there are a lot of choices I could have done. I could have got a CBR 600. I could have got a Injector 600. I could have got a ZX6R. So why did I choose the R6 specifically? Especially since these things cost, these things cost so much nowadays. What made me just dead set on getting one of these? So I want to kind of explain it to you guys and uh, all the points. Because I know to some, paying the market for these right now, with it just being a 600, is a little crazy. Which I don't disagree with you guys. The first thing, since I had an R7, I kind of wanted to stay in the Yamaha family. I didn't want to switch up and go to something else because I'm kind of, it's just something in me that loves the Yamaha. So I didn't want to step up and get a R1. I think that's way too much of a bike for me right now and where I'm at as a rider skill wise. So I think the perfect jump up was to this power level that this bike has. And riding it now, I completely still agree with that statement. I think this power level is a great next step from where I was at. And I think this gives me a lot of room to work with and perfect and better on. This bike is plenty fast for the street. Arguably, if you're just street riding, this could be too fast for the street. So this is more than enough for me to become a really good rider. Because that's what I'm focused on. Bettering myself as a rider, not just what top speed I can hit and the crazy things I can do. I want to just, I want to actually focus on my skills in motorcycles and leaning and turning and every single metric that you can measure on. Again, the next thing would be because since these things got discontinued, they basically become an appreciating asset. So it makes me feel better spending a considerable amount of money knowing that I'm not going to really lose on this bike. It's not going to decrease in value. Worst case scenario, I put 10,000 miles on it and it's worth the same in a year or two. So it makes me feel a lot better knowing that me spending my money on this, let's say I spend $10,000 for example, and then in a year from now, it's worth 7,000, you know? That kind of <laughs> makes it makes it hurt my wallet a little bit more and in my head, and in my head spending that much money. So. Knowing that these are discontinued and they're appreciating and they're becoming more rare every day since you can't buy them anymore for the street and ones will get total, ones will get crashed, you name it. Or people just want to hold on to them for that same fact. Because I know that people are trying to hold on to them because when I went on the market to try and buy one, it took me a few months to come across a good one. Everybody else didn't want to list theirs up and they just want to keep holding on to it. So it's what's creating the crazy market demand for them right now, having that low supply. The next reason would be just how this bike looks. Aesthetically, this bike is beautiful. Like, there's not an angle. I hate on it. Everything is just chef's kiss. Like, they knocked this one out the park. And I think this bike will be timeless forever. Especially since it has such a analog style gauge cluster. I know this bike isn't gonna age. For example, like if in cars, I know, let's say you guys have a digital dash from like five years ago. Compared to now, it's outdated. But this one is made, this, and this one's made very analog. Like some of those uh, GT3 Porsches, you know? They're made pretty analog, so it's not going to date as fast. So this will always kind of have its own spot. So that's another reason why I really like it, is the looks. 
like the front end, the rear end, side view, there's literally not a bad angle on this bike. That I can think of. The R6 is just such a good looking bike. And now next would have to be the sound. So I guess this applies to all 600s that are line fours, but the sound of one of these, it's just incredible. I know I don't have an exhaust system on mine yet, so <laughs> my point isn't that strong, but if I downshift a little bit, you guys can kind of hear what I'm talking about. Just that high pitched scream. It's just, ah. Oh. It's really hard to beat, man. I wish I had a full exhaust system so you, so you guys could actually hear what the sounds like opened up. But if you want to know, go on YouTube, search up some full exhaust R6s and you'll see what I mean. And being able to rev this high, you know, all the way up to like 16, around 16,000 RPMs is just so sick. Like, I'm like full throttle on this bike and I look down being ready to shift it. I'm at like 10K. I'm like, <laughs> I still have so much left to go. So it's so cool. Oh, your boy needs gas. Thankfully, there's a gas station right up here. And then once I get off this thing, I can show you guys the looks too. Yep, here we go. Gas station right up there. Let's pull in right here. Probably get a little thumbnail. Oh, let me put up this visor so I can breathe. Ooh. It's kind of blending in too much with the blue. Let me move this. Let me get my thumbnail real quick. <laughs> Alright, there we go. And there goes the fan. <laughs> Look at this, you guys. Like... From any angle, this thing is a beauty. I love the front right here where it has the intake. These such sleek headlights. The headlights have to be such an amazing part about this bike. Like they're just so sleek and designed so nicely. I'm not I like these ones way better than the ZX6R. And then the rear end. Come on you guys, like that's money right there. And this right here where the air travels through. That's so cool. So yeah, this thing is just a beauty. Now let me throw some gas in here. I'll probably just go to that pump right there. I think my camera's probably about to die. So let me check. If so, I'm going to end the video right here. And if not, then this will be a little longer. Let's see. I got a little bit of battery life left. I'll probably cut this pretty soon. How many miles we got on this thing now? Let me see. Nine hundred forty-six miles. So we're about two hundred miles on this thing so far. Not too bad. Not too bad. Y'all see that? Look how good that looks. Hopefully, I remember to edit out. Do I want a car wash? No, thank you, sir. <laughs> I'll probably mess this bike up with the pressure. Um, and I'll probably lose all my skin. Hopefully, I remember to cut out me putting my PIN number in and my card information. So y'all don't. What is this, bro? 
so y'all don't drain my bank account. What the heck am I watching, bro? Y'all got ads at gas pumps? I wonder how much gas this thing's gonna take right now. Anybody else love the smell of gas? Or am I just like weird for that? But I swear it's just like. Bro. It did not take that much. <laughs> Hold up. Alright, that's pretty much full. Three, a little over three gallons. Can this ad stop? <laughs> oh my gosh. What was he? Something about the smell of gas, you guys. It does something to me. <laughs> what am I talking about right now? Oof. Oh, I can't wait for it to be like another 30 minutes. It's way cooler. Alright, now let's get out of here. Get back on the road. See, I got the 2020, so I don't think I have that starter issue on this. I think it's like those 2017, 2018s that have it. So we're, if you just try and turn on the bike like that, it won't go. You'll just have just starter noise. But then when you do it again, then it turns on. But I think this 2020 is where they fixed it. I do want to say though, thank you guys so much for the support on YouTube recently. It's been insane how fast we've been growing. Because to already be at almost 2,000 subscribers now. It's just awesome you guys and I'm so grateful and I'm so blessed and just thank you so much. And I hope to continue to put out content that you guys enjoy to see. But just thank you so much for the growth. Like, when I think about it, I'm like, dang. Almost 2,000 subscribers and of you guys that like watching me. Like in this long form style of content. It's just really cool. So, I just want to give a thank you message to you guys. Because I always wanted to do YouTube since I was like younger. I mean, I'm 21 right now. I'm still young. But... <laughs> Since I was like a kid, I always wanted to do YouTube. And at first, like 10 years ago, my plan was to do like video game videos <laughs> um, and all that type of stuff. But I grew out of that pretty quickly and I stopped playing video games a couple years ago, once I got out of high school. So I'm glad I found motorcycling and I'm really happy that this is my passion and that I can create videos with it because it's just been a little childhood dream of mine to do social media and do YouTube and yeah just and then for motorcycling to be my way into that it's just really cool and these videos I'm not gonna lie you know it takes a lot of time and uh, effort and the uploading and downloading and editing and filming and it takes a little bit, but I enjoy it so much and I get so excited every single day to wake up and try and get something out to you guys and anytime I post something up and just seeing one positive comment, I'm just like, okay, this was worth it. On a side note though, man, like I didn't realize how good the suspension is on this bike until I got on this. I never ridden an RSX until I bought one and this suspension is just been the most mind-blowing part about this bike is just how well it handles and I haven't even gotten this dialed into my weight yet so I can't even imagine how good it will be then but yeah I think that around set up for today's video I think my phone's about to fly out of my pocket <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's literally like about to fly out let me fix that at this light. I'm trying to stop quick so I can fix my phone. Ah. I should just put it in my jacket pocket. I'm tweaking. Okay. Should be good. 
I completely lost what I was talking about. Oh yeah, the suspension on this bike, bro. Money. It's so good. But, I don't know what I'm gonna do right now. I just wanna ride. It's Sunday when I'm filming this and tomorrow is the start of the work week. So I won't have as much time to just do things like this. So I got my clear visor on because it's about to be nighttime and I'm just gonna enjoy this ride a little bit. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Please take care, ride safe, and peace. And wear your gear you guys, don't be dumb.